Hi, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. This is part three of my Commodore 64 Repair-a-thon. If you haven't watched part one and two yet, I recommend you do that first. I'll put a link up in the corner here to part two and check the description for a link to parts one and two. Now in the last part, we took a look at the number two machine which had a brown screen initially and with a dead test you got a red and a cyan screen and that was due to a bad PLA. Then I took apart the third machine and we started looking at that but I had to cut the video short due to length, so let's get right back to that third machine. Okay, taking a look at this board. On the bottom, it looks factory fresh. It's a little dusty, but I see absolutely no evidence of any rework whatsoever, which matches what we're seeing on the top here. Here we go, let's test the voltage regulation on this board. So 12 volts right here, 11.7, a little low, isn't it? And the five volts, 5.09, that is fine. And I'm just gonna check the input from my power supply. 5.04, so yeah, nothing is bringing the voltage rails down. I right, plug in the video cable. Let's try it first without the diagnostic cartridge. Got a, we got video, black screen. Okay, so let's set this for dead test. Let's plug this baby in. There we go. Uh, okay, we're getting the flashes and at least the colors are correct. But, just like last time, before we touch any of the RAM chips, oh look, it just froze, that's weird. Let's, let's go straight to the PLA. Let's swap that out with the other one. In fact, we're going to probably test all of the chips first on the other board. So I'm just getting the uh, thermal compound on the chips. We can test every single one of them. I don't know why, you know, if Commodore just, if they did this on all the 64s, it would have made things so easy for, for working on these things. Especially, I guess they didn't realize that the PLA was such a failure point with these, but if they had just socketed everything, then swapping chips, you know, would have been a cinch. All right, so this is the PLA on this board. So we just pop that out like that. In fact, uh, let's, just, let's just try this one first, because this, at least this computer is showing some signs of life. All right, here we go with my ZIF unit. Oh, this is not the ZIF unit. <laughs> this is the one we fixed already. Whoops. Here's the ZIF one right here. Plug these in. We'll just double check it's working. Okay, we're good to go. So PLA, huh? It's this one right here. This is the PLA. So we'll pop that in. What's gonna happen? Oh, it's working. Okay, maybe we have a bad RAM chip. Cool. Uh, let me go and pull all the other chips out and we're gonna test those. So I know this PLA is good, so let's put a check mark on that. And let's do the swap and I'll pull the other chips out and we'll put them in here. How easy that is. I mean, getting chips out of these boards can be such a pain. This one is being a little bit of a problem. There we go. Ooh, there's dead bugs. On all right, well, my camera just crashed again, but uh, what I was doing was pulling all these chips out. So everything's out that I can test in the ZIF board. So let's just put everything in that I can. So we got CPU, let's put the VIC in there. Why don't we put the SID in there? We'll just, we'll just go for broke, right? Okay, so SID chip in. 6510 CPU in. CIA chips, the other one is not ZIF, so I'll just test these individually. Oops, <laughs> yeah, that's a VIC chip. That is not a CIA. 6567R8. These are the 6526 CIA chips. So there, and I'm just gonna yank out these ROM chips here. These are my ROMs that are all good. Okay, and this one. So this is 901225, that goes in this socket right here. And then we got 901227, and that is the kernel. And we got 901226, and that goes there. All right, everything is in and looking good. So we'll put this on. Uh, let's just try it and see what happens. All right, so far so good. Let's put the diagnostic cartridge in. Yeah, we're getting that flashing error on the other one. 
could really well be just a bad RAM chip. Well, my camera keeps crashing. I think it's overheating. So <laughs> I let it cool down a little bit. So I'm running the all the chips from the other machine in my ZIF board and everything seems to be working fine except for the SID. And when it comes to play the music, listen to how weird it sounds. It sounds all weird and glitchy. So I think it's bad. Definitely haven't heard one like this. I'll be interested to try some software on this. Maybe I'll hook up the SDIEC and we'll play some something on here. Listen. Okay, you know what? Okay, it, that's weird. It sounds a lot better now. When it was originally playing, it cycled through several times. It was very glitchy. Each note it was playing, it was like, rawr, rawr, like garbled sounding. I reseated it in the ZIF socket and that didn't seem to change it. But now that it's been running for a little while, it's okay. So is there such a thing as a self-healing SID chip? Is that possible? Okay, let's see. Here we go. It's about to play. You hear that? Okay, no. It's still glitchy. Oh yeah, listen to it. That's not normal. So I had already labeled it as um, bad with a little line here, because it kind of works, so it's good for testing and stuff. But this is definitely a very bad glitchy sit. All right, so the camera keeps crashing with this system error message. Sony, I'm using a Sony camera, so I don't even know what that means. It doesn't have any other description of what the error is. So uh, I tested all the chips that I could remove from that other board in my ZIF board, and everything works except the SID chip. The SID chip makes really weird glitchy noises. And then I went back to test the SID chip from that first board, the number one machine, that was that five pin board. And it's really screwed up. It, it creates this weird buzzing noise and doesn't work well. You hear that? It's clearly bad too. At least two of the SIDs are bad so far. All right, back to this board. So we know that there's probably a RAM problem or a logic problem since everything else seems to work. So I'm gonna populate the CPU and the VIC chip. If you're gonna be running the dead test cartridge, what you need in a Commodore 64 is the CPU and the PLA and the VIC. You don't need the ROMs, you don't need the CIAs, and you don't need the SID chip. So we're just gonna leave those out to eliminate any potential problems. I'm having trouble reinserting this chip. This is the CPU. No pins are bent at all. There we go. That went in nicely. All right, the PLA goes into U17, just down here. So it's it's reversed <laughs> on this one. At least the, the markings are the same on the board. So we power this up with the dead test in. We should get that flashing. Oh, Commodore, <laughs> I just noticed something. The socket here for the SID chip is in backwards. It has the notch at the bottom. And every other chip on this board, the notch is on the top, on every socket as well. Although that's, this one's in backwards too, although it doesn't have a, a notch on it. But at least the notch is silk screen on the board. You have to ignore the socket and make sure you put the SID in correctly. But anyways, anyways, these three chips are in. So let's turn this on, plug in the video, and we should get the flashing from the bad RAM. There we go. One. Getting one and then it stops. Very unusual. Let's make sure these are in correctly. In fact, I'm gonna take the PLA out and I'm going to put the deoxid on it because it is a crusty single wipe socket. Put that in again. We know that PLA is good though. Let's see if that changes. A PLA is a really integral chip when it comes to the entire memory and on the entire Commodore 64. Okay, so we got a couple flashes and then it just stops. That's, that's not normal. It's supposed to keep going. I'm gonna put deoxid on the CPU socket as well. I'm kind of not believing that it's a RAM problem, but I'm going to yank the RAM chip anyways. Ah, so hard to get the CPU back in. 
get this back in again. Come on. The socket is so junky. I don't want to force it in. There we go. Okay. Let's just turn that back on. All right. So at least now it seems to be consistently flashing and without stopping. So maybe these sockets are crusty. Of course I pushed down. Do you see that? I pushed down on the CPU and it actually stopped flashing. So I'm wondering if, if this is really bad socket. I'm just not going to touch the board. All right, I'm getting the single flash. All right, back to this here. So single flash, and this is an early, you know, this board has eight chips. So it's this first column. And again, it's U12 for the RAM chip. So it's in the same location as the other board that it was flashing one. But remember, it was actually the PLA that was a problem. But it's this one right here. These are what kind of brand? MT. And yeah, these are pretty prone to failure. So I'm going to definitely yank that chip out. And we can test it in the ZIF board. Because remember, I have that one ZIF socket. So let's yank that out. See if that makes any difference. <laughs> okay. Remember how I said that you should mark where the chips you need to take out on the back of the board? Well, I marked the wrong chip. So I actually took out the multiplexer that was sitting next to the RAM. But then I thought, oh, no big deal, because it's actually a MOS chip. See, and those are super unreliable. Uh, whatever, this is actually a TTL Logic chip, but it's a MOS branded one. So I yanked it out anyways, and then I took out the RAM chip that said it was bad. So let me install two sockets into here. Luckily, no traces were lifted. And then um, we can test the RAM chip in my other board, and we can test this uh, MOS chip in my uh, Multi Pro, Mini Pro tester thingy. So the MOS chip is in the tester, and even though it says MOS7708 uh, is the part number on here, it's actually a 74LS257. So that's what we tested earlier on that other board. So it's still up here. The tester was running, so I hit test. Okay, and it actually tests fine. So this chip has no problem at all. So the DRAM chip could be bad, but let's put that in the ZIF board and see if it's working. Okay, well, I've just plugged in the ZIF board. I was doing a lot of chip swapping, so let's make sure it works. Yep, okay, it's working fine. So we're gonna put the dead test in to this one. We're gonna use this to test the RAM. It's not perfect because there still could be a problem with the DRAM, but I have one ZIF socket on here, right there, that is for testing DRAM. So this is the DRAM chip. We took off the other computer, put that on right there like that. Okay, we're getting flashing. And that's great, that's actually a good sign because that means that this chip probably is bad. If I put back the original chip on this board, which is an MT brand, by the way, MT being the one uh, that I just took off and said was unreliable, put that back on. We shouldn't get any flashing. It should jump right into the test. Yeah, it's not flashing. So, okay, so good. That RAM chip, bad. Put an X on it. There we go, that came up, so we know that the RAM is working. All right, so I'm gonna be installing this type of socket into this board. These are the good ones. There we go, and we'll just solder those on. Okay, let's reseat the VIC and the 8701 and let's deoxid the socket. No, the VIC is working. I actually don't know if the 8701 works, although I do have an extra one of those. Okay, that's those are back in. Uh, and we've got the RAM in, I know works, and we got that in, so here we go. So we're getting the line, and that's normal. We're not getting flashing. Then it goes to this blue screen, which is odd because we know that we should be getting the blue screen border with the white middle. So it's kind of trying to work, but I'm wondering if the color RAM is bad. So the color RAM, which is a SRAM chip, it's this one right here, and it's a MOS chip as well. And if it's bad, then the color information may not be represented correctly here. Uh, let me put the other chips back in and see what happens when I just turn the computer on directly. Okay, so I left out the SID, but that doesn't matter. And let's take the cartridge out, see what happens on its own directly with no... Ah, so we're getting the black screen still. And it's definitely running dead test. Let's try running the other diagnostic ROM, which is the one that normally requires a kernel. It's probably not going to do anything. Yeah, black screen. All right, well, we knew we had a bad RAM chip, but there's something else wrong. 
Okay, so I have a SID chip in here now, and I'm just running the dead test, seeing if it actually produces any sound. Uh, maybe, you know, if, if we're having a problem with the color RAM, then we... Ah, look, it went black. So that could be when it tested the color RAM too, though. All right, well, oh, then it's back. Interesting. Okay, well, clearly there's a fault, and I'll have to do some more troubleshooting. Oh, before putting this one and going on to the next one, I was going to try another one of these uh, 8701 chips. The little oscillator. Don't really know fault-wise what you get when when that's bad. And I have I have five more here. Interesting is you can get these from AliExpress. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. And they're not that expensive either. When I got these chips, they seem like new old stock. I actually tested all of them, and they all work. And these have date codes of 1987 on them. Yeah, these have date codes of the 33 week of 1987, and the one that's in here has a 33 week of 1984. So we'll pop that out and we'll pop in a new one. Turn this on and see what happens. It's bad, I don't know what it does. I don't know what the symptom is. Okay, so no change. So definitely this original one is working perfectly. So I'll swap them back. Okay, so I've connected the Logic Pro back to this machine. I, I'm still suspecting that maybe this 7708 or you know this LS chip is bad. We know we tested this one on the Mini Pro and it's fine. So I yanked out this other MOS chip and I stuck a socket in there. And I currently have that chip inside the Mini Pro. And check it out, when I hit test, it says error. So there we go, not happy. Now I can stick this back in the board and we can hit it with a logic probe and just listen to how it sounds different. So let's put this back in and take a listen. It's plugged in and if we go through the pins here, so I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna alternate. But that one sounds high, so that's different. It's changing as the cartridge is trying to boot up the computer, right? It's changing in a different way. Solid, that's the same. Slow beeping slow and low frequency. So it's different, but not necessarily, you know, I, nothing jumps out as, you know, obviously wrong. And well, I'm gonna change this chip out with one that works, see if the computer is fixed, and let's see if it sounds different. Well, the camera crashed again. So I'm not sure how much of that you guys caught, but needless to say, I used the Logic Probe. I went through all the pins on these two chips. Some of them sounded different, some sounded the same. So I don't know. But what I did is I went into my stash of chips, here we go, and I found another replacement. And when I turn this on now with the dead test, we get flashing again. So it's quite possible another one of these RAM chips are bad, because like I said, these are super unreliable chips. And we know that this chip did test bad in the tester, so I drew an X on it. So let's look up and see which RAM chip this is that's bad now. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, six flashes. Six flashes shows up as U22, which is good because that's this chip right here and it's on the lower row. And if I recall these multiplexers or whatever these chips do, these handle each four of these chips. With that being bad, dead test wouldn't have been able to detect that there was a bad chip on this row. So let's yank out this chip and I'll put a socket in and we'll see if that fixes this computer. All right, we have number three, and you hear the tones, and it's running the diagnostics without any issue. This machine is now seemingly fully operational. The problem was bad RAM at U22 and U12, and then we had a bad 74LS257 in this one right here. But otherwise, this machine is working now. So number three, fixed. All right, now we're on to machine number four. So this one's um, okay condition. It's got the older keyboard with the orange F keys. Someone has stuck right protect tabs right here and here. I thought maybe they were covering up a hole, but they seem to not be. There's a Goodwill price tag, $2.99. Uh, whoever got this, got this from the old days before they charged a lot more for <laughs> retro computers. It says $2.99 here again and twelve six. So is that 2006, you think? December 2006 maybe? All right, that screw just fell out. Oh, we do have a broken clip. All right, all the chips are here, that's good. 
So let's just put uh, number four here. This just goes bye-bye. I would say by looking at the heat shield, it has not been desoldered. This is the original solder here that I am cutting off. Goodbye shield. Remember uh, this one chip here, it's been socketed. Well, that's uh, aftermarket or done by Commodore maybe. Whoever did it cleaned up. So the traces are a bit worn out. There's uh, some copper exposed. Definitely looks like maybe this has been reworked as well. I can see some, also some traces that have the solder mask exposed. Actually this, this chip as well here. So this was the CPU. Also has definitely a desoldering iron has been on this as well. Oh, and over here as well. All of these socketed chips, these three, plus this chip here have all been reworked at some point. All right, time to check the voltages. Plug this in. Ground. Here we go. 18 on that side, so we're getting good power. 11.9, and on five volts, 4.94, and on the power supply itself, 5.05. .05. Okay, so power rails are good. Let's plug it into the monitor. What happens if I turn this on now? Oh, well, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> it, it just seems to be working. <laughs> Let's put the diagnostic cartridge in. The times are looking good here on the uh, two CIA chips, so we think those are probably okay. That SID does not sound healthy. That is not, how could we have another SID that sounds bad? I don't, I, I'm just, I'm shocked. I mean, maybe, I, maybe they sound fine in games. I don't know. It's really buzzy now. Even though there's no sound being produced, it's, yeah, it's quite a lot more buzzy than it was earlier. Like the notes are playing wrong it's all right so this one has the weird SID and everything else seems to be working but without plugging the keyboard and joystick it we're not gonna know for sure so I'll need to do this for all of the 64s that are working so we have two three and four that are working now and um, I'm gonna use my easy flash 3 cartridge here to get this thing up and running on a game let's go to Jeff let's go to Jaffy DOS and print. I'm using my own keyboard because those ones are unknown whether the, how well they type. They might have bad contacts, but this keyboard I know is working. Adrian, oh boy. It's hard to type at an offset. Digital basement. Adrian's digital basement. Why don't we try Donkey Kong, the arcade version? This is a much more recent port. Has sound. Uh, that's not sounding correct. That's screwed up sounding. I mean, it's funny. If you aren't used to how that should sound, you might... Oh, it's really... Do you hear that? That sounds terrible. You hear all that? That's wrong. Let me put a different SID in here so you'll hear how this actually sounds. Good comparison. Okay, I put the SID in here that is from my Ziff machine, which is a good SID. It's working fine. And we'll go back to Donkey Kong and you'll hear how it should sound. This is how it should sound. I 
Alright, well anyways, let's try playing this C. See if the joystick port's working, at least the keyboard seems to be working fine. By the way, this is a great arcade port of Donkey Kong. So much better than any other version. Yeah, it seems to be working fine. Oh, okay, I suck. Hey there, I know you don't like it, but we gotta cut this video short because it's getting too long. Come back to watch part four where we look back at that first machine again and get that one working. I hope you've enjoyed this video series so far. I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you have. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs down. You can put your comments and questions in the comment section below. Of course, you can subscribe for more videos. And thank you for watching. Bye.